You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Bufa. A computer issue caused chaos for businesses big and small today, from airports and the MTA and even at Starbucks. So what happened? Virginia Huey has a story. A massive tech meltdown was fraying nerves and testing people's patience around the world. This was ridiculous. The global outage caused by a faulty software update disrupted operations at airports, state DMV offices, media outlets, banks and businesses. Thousands of flights were grounded nationwide. The delays and cancellations left many passengers stranded at LaGuardia Airport and JFK Airport. It's concerning because it affects so many systems. Sylvia Sewell's flight out of Islip MacArthur Airport to Maine was grounded. She had to cancel her trip. And then our flight is delayed and Breeze Airlines is being very good to notify us, but we can't rebook because they can't access their systems. Elise Horning's flight from Norfolk, Virginia to Islip was also delayed, but she considers herself one of the lucky ones. We're only an hour and 15 minutes late. But everybody else at Norfolk, we came from Norfolk, were crazed and things were canceled all over the place. Other Long Islanders said they couldn't order a coffee or bite to eat at Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts because their systems were down. They were like, don't come, you can't come, you know, order online and then it, we, we don't know if we can pay by online. It was, it was crazy. The outages started just after midnight when CrowdStrike, a cybersecurity firm, deployed a faulty update while trying to keep their customers safe from hackers had a fault that was built into it, a bug, uh, sort of melded with issues with Microsoft-based uh, systems, and suddenly you have a, uh, a massive, massive number of outages. Experts say the global tech meltdown highlights our fragile dependence on certain software and the cascading effect it can have when things go wrong. Suffolk County sent out a note telling their users to be extremely you know, wary because uh, opportunities like this are used by cyber attackers to, you know, to go after systems. It's an important reminder to have multiple safeguards up to keep cases like this like from happening. It's, you know, it's just a complete failure. Although CrowdStrike said a fix is on the way, it will take time for it to roll out across the many systems around the world. For Newsday TV, I'm Virginia Huey. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Prosecutors say the blood alcohol level of the suspect in the deadly nail salon crash was more than twice the legal limit. Stephen Schwally told police he drank 18 beers the night before. The 64-year-old did not appear in court today and has been hospitalized since the crash. Four people were killed and nine others were injured. I cried last night. Um, I post the, the video of my family party on the Instagram because I miss, I miss my brothers. Maybe we want this, this guy, this attacker, um, to pay what he deserves. Schwally pleaded not guilty to driving while intoxicated earlier this month. He's scheduled to return to court on July 30th. And a man shot and killed his dog at Christopher Morley Park after he was attacked by the animal. Police say the dog was off leash when it turned on its owner. The 43-year-old man had injuries on his arm and leg and had a licensed gun permit. And a judge has denied former Congressman George Santos' request to dismiss federal charges. His attorneys asked a court to dismiss charges of identity theft and theft of government funds, saying the facts are, quote, insufficient. Santos has pleaded not guilty to multiple criminal charges, including allegedly defrauding campaign donors and lying to Congress. And the Republican National Convention has ended, but Sherry Einhorn spoke with local GOP leaders about what Donald Trump's plans could mean for the island. A big night here at the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. All eyes are on center stage as Donald Trump formally accepted his party's nomination. He then addressed an enthusiastic crowd of thousands, including delegates from Long Island, who had this to say after the speech. Exciting speech by President Trump on what he will do when he takes office again in January, about putting our economy back on track. President Trump covered a lot. He was focused on uniting the country. He doesn't want to serve as president for half the country. He wants to be the president for all the country. We're going to go forward together, unified, 
have a great victory in November, not only for the president, but for all our congressmen on Long Island. It's a great start. We're going to carry it right through. President Trump laid out his plan uh, for the next four years, talking about solutions to the problems that are plaguing the American people. I think the beginning was emotional. He talked about last Saturday and how the future of this nation could have changed in an instant, uh, but took into consideration how quick life can change. Next up, the Democratic National Convention. That will take place in a few weeks in Chicago. For now, in Milwaukee, I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. Now to get more of our team's takeaways from the RNC, go to Newsday.com, click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Newsday Sports is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. A Long Island basketball star is headed to Paris to compete in the Olympic Games. Krista Kelman has a story you'll see only in Newsday. I'm really about to play against the best of the best in the world. <laughs> More than 10,000 athletes from around the globe will travel to Paris to compete at the Olympic Games. And among them is Bellport's own, Arella Garantes, who will represent Puerto Rico in women's basketball. I think you watch the Olympics and you grow up and you think, I, I want to be there, like, but I don't think I knew how to get there. And she was like, Ma, we're going to the Olympics. And I just sat there and cried. Garantes, whose grandfather was born in Puerto Rico, has been a part of the national team since 2017. As I get older, I realize just how grateful I am to just even be Puerto Rican. I was just in Puerto Rico a couple weeks ago, and um, I was working out, and I didn't have a rebounder, and my Uber driver got out of the car and passed me the ball. That type of support is just like, it makes you think like, wow, it's really bigger than, you know, just basketball. <laughs> The Newsday Suffolk Player of the Year starred at Bellport before going to Rutgers to play and then with the WNBA's Los Angeles Sparks and Seattle Storm. You're heading off to Paris, but before that you come here back to your roots to play at Bellport and practice. Why? This is home to me. Um, the amount of hours that I put in this gym and the amount of hours is given back to me. I never take that for granted. It just makes me more grateful that I get to really be a blueprint for some of these girls. This is what she said she wanted to do, and she did it, to pay for Puerto Rico's national team. And now to be an Olympian, she did it. She's doing it. <laughs> She's not done yet. I'm going to be soaking it all in. I'm just going to be ready for the moment. In Bellport, Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. Congratulations to her. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More for the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. Brisket, ribs, and pulled pork. These barbecue spots have something for everyone. Elisa DiStefano and Andy Berlin have today's Feed Me TV. You have to get brisket here, number one. And then we're doing a wild card, pernil, which is a Ooh. Latin American pork that I want to try. That'll be the first for me. I've never tried it. Yeah. All right. I'm excited to eat. Village Barbecue is one of food writer Andy Berlin's favorites on Newsday's Best Barbecue List. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> that, we have to do before you barbecue. What was that, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> The casual, small North Merrick spot is big on brisket. I love it fatty, I love it juicy. I love that bark on the outside. It's just gotta like melt in your mouth. All right, it's the most beautiful expression of beef. <laughs> I love that. Mm. Melt in your mouth. You gotta try the yams though. Oh, I'm trying to pace myself, Andy. So this is pernil. I haven't tried this yet. Looks porky. Very porky. Look at that skin. Wait, do you eat the skin? Um, I do, because I'm a bad girl. 
I'm doing what she's doing. She's the expert. What is this? It's so good. Mm. I love this yeah, place. Next stop, more meat at Swing Bellies in Long Beach. Okay, Andy. Good thing I left a little bit of room. What are we ordering? All right, so last time I was here, I got the chicken and ribs combo, and that was that. Um, so, <laughs> gotta do that one. <laughs> and then I wanna try the pulled pork, too. So I gave um, myself the easy job. <laughs> the pork is already pulled. Andy has to do some cutting of the cutting ribs. of the ribs here. Shoot. I feel like I should like step back. Yeah. I think you're doing it the wrong way. I think it's that way. Wait. <laughs> Who's the food critic here? Who's the food critic? <laughs> Andy, do you want me to cut your meat for you? She's better at eating them than cutting them. Just, just <laughs> we'll see okay. about them. Okay, let's try the chicken. It, it looks really good. But the dark meat, that's a good stuff. Mm -hmm. Look at this. <laughs> okay, maybe that one didn't go as well as I thought. We're not gonna be invited back. <laughs> Do not give this woman a reservation. Yes. Barbecue is just messy. Like, it's messy, gotta work a little bit, but it's worth, it's worth it, right? What I like about this place mm -hmm. is it gives you that classic Texas barbecue experience, just like an all around, decadent, delicious experience, you know? What she said. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. Man, it all looks good. Let's read more about where to find the best barbecue. Go to Newsday.com, click Get More, for the Newsday TV video box. It's gonna be a dry weekend, so let's take a look at your Long Island weather. It was a gorgeous day today. It was just nice, mild, no humidity, felt amazing. And tomorrow, we're in the 80s with clouds overhead. Take a closer look at tomorrow. You can see those clouds will be there, but the rain will not be, and temps will be in the 80s. But as for next week when it comes to rain, woof, it's gonna be a lot of it, starting on Tuesday. So enjoy the weekend while you can. Long Island weather is brought to you by Sun Nation Energy, helping Long Islanders save on their energy bills for over 20 years. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us and have a great weekend.